Hello, Blake Grutis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I want to talk about the new, newly revamped Topaz Remask 4. Uh, it's even easier and and, and more, I think, efficient than it used to be, which is kind of a shock to me because the old remask was awesome. So basically what I'm going to talk about here, just to give you a little heads up, is um, so you have remask, and a lot of times I've used remask for compositing, where I want to remove something from the background. Like with this, I could remove the donkey and put him pretty much just about anywhere I wanted to, because I have him and I can do that. But what I want to show you is how you can take a photo like this and just make it better using Remask by separating some things before you go ahead and do your editing. Okay, so now I'm going to go up to Filter, Topaz Labs, and I'm going to go to Topaz Remask 4. So when I'm in Remask 4, and if you have Remask 3, uh, you'll see that there's a, a big difference over here on the left-hand side. They've made it even easier, and even, I, I don't want to use the term dummy-proof, um, but it's, uh, I guess it's Blake-proof, so that works. All right, so the whole premise of Remask and, and making a mask is, and this is how I do it, is you paint with blue for the tricky areas, and you fill with red, and you're done. It's that easy to make a mask. Now, I've worked with the Refine Edge tool in Photoshop and several other ways to make masks, and never before have I ever come up with a more easy process than Topaz Remask. So I'm just going to show it to you here. So I'm going to paint with blue. I've got a, a relatively decent sized brush to go around these edges here of the donkey. I want to remove the donkey first, and I'm going to come back in and I'm going to remove the sky. I'm going to do two different masks, and you're going to see how fast this is. Now, I'm also using a Wacom tablet, so that grants me the ability to work relatively quick here when I'm grabbing these uh, areas. Um, so, because I can kind of just draw around them, I'm just drawing, tracing around the areas that I want to keep. Uh, the green is going to stay. If you if you press Compute Mask. Whatever's green is what you're going to get. The red goes away, and the blue is what you identify as tricky areas. So that remask knows, hey, okay, uh, I know that this is an area that you're going to have difficulty masking, so I'll do all the hard work for you. Um, and a lot of times, I'll just bring a photograph into remask and say, okay, remask, let's see if you can make this photograph uh, mask easily because I had a tricky time doing it in Photoshop. Let's see what you can do. And I would say 95% of the time, remask pulls through. So now I'm going to go down to where it says fills and just push that little red button. Boom, take that away. Boom, take that away. Boom, take that away and compute mask. Now I think the mask computing here, I haven't talked to Topaz about this, but I think it's faster than it used to be because uh, it used to take quite a bit. Now you're going to see around the edges here, you got some really weird looking things. You can, you have several options here. You can see what's being cut away. You can see what's being kept. You can see the, the mask. You can see the tri-map that we made before and the actual original. So what I'm going to do is go to the keep. Now if I see some squares coming through, that means that that's an area where uh, even remask had kind of trouble. So if I go to the mask, and I, it's easier to see it on the mask, I just press this little green uh, magic brush here and I click right there it knows that those are areas that I want to keep. It's pretty intuitive. You can see it's working. Uh, as it's working, it's taking those areas and it's keeping them. Same thing with this leg here. Uh, I want to make sure that that leg stays. So now let me go to what's being kept and see if that's a better mask. And certainly it is. Now there is one area that I'm having difficulty with and that's right over here. So if I just take the red brush and just tap it right around that edge that's giving me some difficulty, it'll start to take all that away. Okay, so once I'm done with that, I can actually go in here and do some recovery stuff. If you're doing stuff on a green screen, sometimes you get the uh, the uh, green screen reflecting on the, the edge of the person you're taking away. You can come over here and just press desaturate, and that will desaturate that edge. And then if you press, if you go into the recovery one, that will help clean up that edge even more uh, on the mask. So that's a great feature too. So I'm just going to press OK on this one. So now I've got my mask for my donkey here. If I go ahead and press the Alt key and click on the eyeball, I now see that all I have is the donkey, right? So I'll just go ahead and click off of that. I'm going to go back to the background. I'm going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to Topaz Labs and Remask 4. Now I'm going to show you something else here because if you see mine, I had a new layer with a mask. There's a couple things you can do here. If you go into Menu and you go to Preferences, you can go in and you can say uh, how you want your mask to be created. Uh, one thing I would suggest here is the Enable Auto Create Layer. What that's going to do is every time you open up Topaz Remask 
and on the photo you're working on, it's automatically going to duplicate the layer that you told it you want to make the mask from. That's a great thing so that you're not making a mask on the background layer. The next thing here is enable user layer mask. If you click that, that's going to make sure that when it makes the layer, it makes the mask with it. If you don't have that clicked, what you'll get, like what you saw there, is instead of a mask for the donkey, you'll just see a new layer with just the donkey. Okay? So I'm just going to press OK here, and I'm going to go back into Topaz Remask, and I'm going to select for the sky. And boom, just going to start tracing around here with the tricky brush, the tricky, tricky brush. It's not called the tricky, tricky brush, but that's my term for it. You're getting a little invite into my head and how I work, so um, if you're scared, I suggest you leave now. All right, I'm just going to keep going around and around and around and around and around. And here is the interesting part. Up here, you got this little lead wire up here for the top of that barn. It's like a weather vane, and you got another one right here. Let's see how well Remask deals with that. All right. If you're anything like me, this is fun. Okay, so we're going to press the red fill, put it in the area we don't want to keep, and press Compute Mask. And look at that. Remask knew exactly what those areas were and that I wanted to keep them. Or actually get rid of them to, to keep it with the rest of the barn in the background. That That's pretty cool. So I'm going to just go ahead and press Compute Mask because I'm happy with that mask. You know, mask in two seconds, I'll take it. It's a lot better than using the Refine Edge tool. So I'll press OK. That's going to give me, now you see I have two different masks here. I've got a mask for, I'm going to just going to call this Sky and I'm going to call this Donkey. So now that I've got these two layers separated, I'm going to go into Camera Raw and I'm going to modify them separately. So this is what I love about this new workflow that I have here with Topaz Remask and Camera Raw as a filter right in um, Photoshop. I love it. So now I know what you're going to say here. You're going to say, well, why don't you just use Camera Raw to begin with? And the reason why I didn't was because I wanted to independently modify the layers that I've got going here. So I'm going to go into camera all three separate times and I'm going to make adjustments for the donkey. I'm going to make adjustments for the background and I'm going to make adjustments for the sky. All right. So I'm going to press, if I go to the, uh, the donkey here and press control shift a, that's going to bring me right into, um, camera roll. So I don't want you to really look at the background or the foreground. All I want you to do is look at the donkey and watch what's happening to the donkey. So we need to increase the exposure on the donkey so we can see the donkey now. And now we need to increase, um, the highlights aren't really doing anything to the donkey. Let's increase the shadows a little bit on that donkey. And the whites aren't really going to do us much good. How about the contrast? Contrast, a little bit of contrast is good there. Maybe some clarity, a um, little bit of clarity. And then maybe a little bit of yellow to give him some, uh, some nice color. So now press OK and look at that. I've got my donkey separated from my background and he looks good. So now let me go to my background here and press control shift A on the background. Now I'm going to process for the background. So I'm going to bring in some exposure. Uh, I'm going to bring in some highlights. Let me take some shadows away here. Um, let me go ahead and, and bring in some whites. See, I, I needed to independently adjust these because of the, uh, the intricacies of this image here. And do I want some clarity back there? Yeah, why not? Let's make that really dirty looking, that dirty looking farm. Uh, vibrance, sure. A little bit of vibrance will be good too. Press OK. So now our background looks good. Now it's time to get our sky to match everything else. So we're going to press Control Shift A on the sky. Now for the sky, I want to process this. I want to make it look like a nice vibrant blue sky. So I'll give it a little bit of exposure. I'll give it some blue in my color temperature. I'll go into my highlights and really boost those highlights. I like it when clouds have that like ethereal, uh, big puffy look to them where they've got nice you know, white. They're really white. That's what I like with my clouds. So I'll go ahead and increase that color temperature just a little bit more to make that a little bit more blue back there. Uh, clarity, not going to help. I don't want nasty, mean looking clouds back there so, because it wasn't a rainy day. I don't want it to look like one. So I'll just leave that at zero. Vibrance, we'll give that a little bit of vibrance to give it some color back there. Um, let's go into our shadows, maybe open up some of the shadows in those clouds, make them a little bit whiter and press OK. So now all of these seem to be pretty good looking. Uh, let's go to our history and click on the before. So that's our before. This is an image that I probably would have trashed because I looked at it and I said, well, you know what? It didn't really do what I wanted it to do. I probably could try and fix it in camera raw, but Topaz Remask 4 just came out. So I said, 
let me put it to the test. Let me see what this can do. And then I said, well, that's pretty cool, but what can something like detail do for this donkey? So let's go into Topaz Detail. So we're going to go Filter, Topaz Labs, and go to Detail 3. So what I like about Topaz Detail 3 is the ability to modify my details and my image independently between the small, medium, and large details. It's kind of like, um, I would say it's kind of like Clarity, but Topaz Clarity is more like Clarity. Um, but what it allows you to do is get into those, those little minute details and really bring those out. It's kind of like, if you do work with Photomatics, it's like the micro contrast slider. So let's just go ahead and get these all to zero. So I'm going to zoom into my donkey here. I don't know if anyone's ever said that before. I'm going to zoom into my donkey. All right, and I'm going to go into the small details and boost them up a little bit. Um, not, I said boost them up a little bit. I don't really use the small details boost slider because if I do, things start to get a little hairy. <laughs> no pun intended. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit, actually. I bring it down so that it uh, kind of what it does is it helps blend those details in when you bring it down. So if I bring this up, I can get some really nice intricacy in those small details. Let's look at the medium details. So I can bring that up and get some more in the medium details as well. Bring up in the large details, and then maybe smooth out those large details, smooth out those medium details. And let's look at our before and after. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, I've basically done a slight uh, adjustment to this, a slight almost HDR look to this just on the donkey. So now what I want to do is finish this up with a dodge and burn layer. So I'm, what I'm going to do with dodging and burning, I have a whole tutorial on this. So all I'm going to do is show you that I just make a new layer, shift F5, fill with black, or uh, sorry, with gray, my apologies, and press OK. Change that to soft light, and now I'm going to go into my dodge tool, and I'm going to dodge away his nose and his mouth here, so that those are a little bit more prevalent in the foreground of the image, um, because it's kind of on the edge there where I start to get towards my lens. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to I'm going to dodge away right around his eye here, so that, that has some more life to it. Maybe I'll dodge inside his ears a little bit for that hair. Maybe dodge inside this ear along the side of his cheek here. And then if I press and hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, I'm going to go ahead and start um, burning in areas. And I like to burn in areas where um, dark meets light. And what that does is it helps push away the dark areas and pull forward those light areas to help add depth. So it really, with this uh, donkey here, it, it made it, made it um, it really kind of pushed that one leg forward. So if we turn our uh, dodging and burning layer off, we can see just how effective our dodge and burn layer is, especially on the nose in the foreground here and our eye. So Topaz Remask. This would not have been possible without you, so I have to say thank you for all that you've done with this. And there's one piece here that I see that didn't really quite go very well on the donkey on the mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, this is why it's important to have it on a mask, because now I can go into this mask and I can just paint with black on that area. I'm going to go ahead and make my brush a little bit smaller and just paint black on that little bump that I missed in the remask. Now, if I would have been a little bit more... Um, cautious of that during my remasking, I would have caught that. But the beauty of this being on its own mask is that I can go ahead and bring anything back. So again, like I was saying, Topaz Remask, thank you for this. This is perfect. I really like what you've done here for me because I would not have been able to do this without you. So the vision that I had in my head when I started was this donkey picture. I already knew what it was going to look like in my head, especially with that 24 millimeter wide angle. Really kind of upset I didn't bring my 17 millimeter because that would have been even cooler. Um, but the, the vision in my head was there, but it wasn't there when I took the picture. And we can see that by going back to the original. This could have easily been thrown in the trash. Thanks. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. I do these tutorials quite often. I try to do one, a brand new one every single Friday. So if you subscribe, you'll get a little notification that says, hey, Blake's got a new tutorial on the Everyday HDR channel. So if you subscribe, that would be awesome. Um, I also have those websites that I discussed, Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And please, if you found this useful or helpful, go ahead and share it because there's probably another photographer in your community that might need this remasking capability.